In this example, we want to use Riemann sums to evaluate the integral from 1 to 4 of x squared minus 4x plus 2 dx. Well, all right, okay, this is going to be non-trivial. Let's get to it. We start with the limit definition of the definite integral, which tells us that the integral is equal to the limit as n goes to infinity of the sum from k equals 1 to n of f of fk star delta x. Okay, so we are essentially letting a bunch of rectangles become infinitely thin. That gives us the exact area under this curve. Okay, for delta x, recall that delta x is always b minus a, the endpoints, over n. That'll give us the width of these rectangles, right? We're, we're, this is essentially a rectangle here. Here's the height, and here's the width. And we're adding up an infinite number of rectangles that we will let become infinitely thin. So in this case, our delta x is 4 minus 1 over n, which comes to 3 over n. Additionally, we'll use right endpoints for x k star, because those are usually easier to work with, and the star means it doesn't matter where it is in the interval of the rectangle. Well, x k star is always, for the right endpoints, a plus k delta x. But a in our situation is 1 plus k, and then delta x we decided was already 3 over n. So we can write this as 1 plus 3k over n. Okay, so we have a value for delta x, we have a value for xk star. Now we can get to work computing this integral. Okay, so this integral is going to be the limit as n goes to infinity of the sum of k equals 1 to n. All right, f of x k star. Well, every time we see x in this function, we're going to replace it with 1 plus 3k over n. So replace it there, and replace it there. So this becomes, let's see, 1 plus 3k over n quantity squared minus 4 times 1 plus 3k over n plus 2. All of this is times delta x, which we decided was 3 over n. So we've replaced our f of xk star and our delta x here. Well, delta x, the only thing changing in this sum are the k's. The n inside this sum is actually a constant. It's just whatever this highest number is here. So anything with just an n in it we can bring out to the front of the sum. Namely, this 3 over n will come out to the front of the sum, but the limit does have an n in it, so it can't just go out to the front of the limit. So this gives us the limit as n goes to infinity, now times, or of, 3 over n times the sum of k equals 1 to n. And let's see where we stand here. Let's expand everything out. If we expand out this first expression here, we get 1 plus 6k over n plus 9k squared, k squared over n squared. All right, now I'll distribute this negative 4 through. Minus 4 minus 12k over n plus 2. All of this is still inside the sum. Next we can clean this up a little bit. Clear out some room because we'll need it. Uh, let's see what happens here. The 1 and the negative 4 and the 2 go together and then we also have 6k over n minus 12k over n. So this gives the sum of, let's see, we have 9k squared over n squared minus 6k over n minus 1. All of that's still inside the sum. But let's recall some useful facts about Riemann sums. So here we are. These are facts that you should essentially have internalized about Riemann sums, or at least be working on internalizing them. Uh, but here we go. We'll start out by using this one that tells us that we can break up uh, one big sum into a bunch of smaller sums, essentially, across plus or minus. 
So we still have our limit as n goes to infinity and 3n, and then we'll just break this up into smaller sums. So we have the sum of 9k squared over n squared minus the sum of 6k over n minus the sum of 1. All right. Well, now we can use the technique for each one of these sums. Going back to our useful facts, note that the sum of a constant is just n times that constant. So the sum of simply 1 is going to be n times 1, which is just n. So we'll make that substitution. We also have these two facts about k and k squared. So the sum of k can be written as n times n plus 1 all over 2, and k squared can be written as n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 all over 6. We'll also use this fact that a constant inside a sum comes out to the front of a sum. So we have the sum of 9k squared over n squared, but in this case the 9 over n squared is a constant, so it's going to come out to the front of the sum uh, because only k is changing inside the sum. So n is actually a constant until we evaluate the limit. So if we bring that out to the front, we have 9 over n squared times, and now we decided that k squared is all of this business with the n's. So we have n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 all over 6. On to the second term, note that in this case 6 over n is actually a constant, so that will come out to the front of the sum here, giving us minus 6 over n times the sum of k, but the sum of k is n, n plus 1 over 2. So we have n times n plus 1 all over 2 here. And then finally minus the sum of simply 1, but we already decided that that would become n. All right. Let's see if we can do some simplification here. We sure can. Uh, in this first term, we have the 9 and the 6. Those We can get a 3 out of both of those, leaving a 3 up top and a 2 on the bottom. One of these n's can cancel uh, in the top and the bottom, leaving us with n plus 1, 2n plus 1 on the top, and then simply an n on the bottom. Second, in the middle term, the n's can cancel, and the 6 and the 2 cancel, leaving us with a 3. And there's that for now. So let's just clean it up. And now look, we have simply a limit here. There's no more sums. So now we're essentially back to just evaluating a limit, trying to simplify it down so we can actually see what we're working with. But really, we're just evaluating a limit here. So there's still plenty of simplification left to do. We distribute this 3n through to all three of these terms right inside the parentheses here. And then I'm going to FOIL the two binomials in the first term together. This gives 9 over 2n squared times, all right, FOILing those together gives 2n squared plus 3n plus 1. All right, then the second term becomes 9 over n times the quantity n plus 1. And then the last term becomes 3 in, uh, three over n times n. Uh, and this should be a minus here in the, in the middle term. OK, maybe you can just evaluate the limit from here. Maybe you can't. It's no big deal. So we can expand this out to get the limit as n goes to infinity of 9 plus, what, 27 n over 2 n squared plus 9 over 2 n squared. None of these terms matter because they're just going to 0 as the limit comes in as well. But then we have minus 9. The n's cancel out. Uh, minus 9 over n. So then that one will go to 0. And then we have minus 3. So after all is said and done, this limit is 9 minus 9 minus 3 equals negative 3. And after all that, we have evaluated this definite integral. Well, how can the net area be negative? Remember, the integral gives us the area, quote, under the curve, which we also call the net area. And suddenly it's negative. Well, remember that the area under the x-axis is negative, And the area above the x-axis is positive. 
So if we look at this function graphed and consider the area under it, you can see that there's more area under the x-axis than above it, which is why this whole integral comes out to a negative value.